Today, I'm going to take off my mask because it's just me in the video recording here uh, so I can speak with you, but we're going to talk about our, the manufacturing of our, of our chassis for our IME 156 PRISM project. So this is what our chassis is going to look like when it's all completed and your project is completed and installed. So we're going to build the aluminum chassis first. So we have a set of instructions for manufacturing the top piece and on the back side the bottom piece. And I'm going to start with the top piece. And the first instruction is to engrave name, quarter, and year on the white side in the area indicated below. And it's indicating engraving in this area right here below. So I'm going to turn this over to the white side and pick an area to engrave my name quarter and year here. And when that's finished, we'll do the same thing on the bottom sheet when we're here with the engraver and engrave name, quarter, and year on the bottom sheet. Once that's complete, we'll have the engraving part completed. I'm going to take the engraving tool here and disinfect it with paper towel and alcohol. Wipe it down so that it's clean and disinfected for the next person. Now that we've done the engraving, the next step is to um, use a center punch to make a tiny dimple for punching out the holes in each of the locations. So we're going to use our center punch on each of the crosshairs. And so I can choose any of them and I'm just going to point the center of the punch there right in the middle. And then I'm going to put down firm pressure and kind of do a twisting motion sufficient to make a nice little dimple in the middle of the crosshair. And I'll come to the next one similarly until I've made dimples on all of the crosshair locations that I'm later going to punch okay, so out. So now I've finished making um, crosshairs, uh, indentations on all the crosshairs for both the top and bottom sheets and I'm ready to go over and punch out some of the shapes. Okay, so we've moved over to the punches and my instructions call for using the punches as indicated to remove the whole materials at the crosshairs that I've made the indentations on. So according to our drawing, there's a number of small 3 16 inch diameter holes that need to be made at each of the small locations indicated on the sheet metal. So I'm going to go ahead and use the 3 16 punch here and it shows that it's a 3 16 punch there and I'm going to go and there's a small uh, point on the tip of the punch that will slide into each of the little divots that I've made to locate it exactly where I've made the center punch marks and that's where it fits right into and then I can punch that hole out. I'll continue to do that for the other locations indicated by again dropping it down slightly until it fits right into the little divot that I've made, the center punch that I've made, and I'll continue to work around until I've completed all of the 3 16 inch diameter Holes. So I finished making the 3 16 inch diameter punches for the top sheet. Now I will make the 3 16 inch diameter holes in the bottom sheet next. Finished the 3 16 hole punches for both sheets. I'm going to move over to the 5 16 inch, but before I do, I'm going to disinfect the tool that I've been using for safety. So I spray down a wipe provided and the areas that I've touched uh, with the isopropyl alcohol and paper towel. And then I move over to the 5 16 punch because I'll need to make two holes 
for the 12 volt and for the potentiometer. And now I'm finished with the 3 16 and 5 16 inch. And I'm ready to move on to the next tool, but to disinfect for the next user, I'll again spray with isopropyl alcohol and wipe down the handle to disinfect. And I'll throw paper away in the trash. Okay, so now we're going to go to the turret punch and according to our instructions for the top sheet, I need to make three one and a quarter inch diameter holes for the LEDs. So I'm going to find the one and a quarter inch punch uh, for that and I'll lease this handle here to make it uh, rotatable and then I can lock it into the one and a quarter inch position. So one of the things that makes it easier to align these, this, this center punch with the larger diameter um, hole or divot that I've made and uh, center mark I've made at the crosshairs is to bring it down part way and then bring the sheet metal up to it and then slowly bring it down it's just a little trick that can help you align the little tip on the punch with the center mark you've made on the, uh, at the crosshairs. And now I've made my three holes for our uh, on-off switch. And that calls for three quarters of an inch diameter. So again, I'm going to release and rotate the turret to the three quarter inch diameter position and get set to do the same procedure with the three quarter inch diameter hole. I'm going to bring the handle down slightly so that the center um, point aligns with the center mark that I've made at the crosshair and now I can feel it fit into, uh, fall into place there and hold it in position for the rest of the punching operation. And now I've completed all the holes for the top and bottom of my uh, prism chassis pieces. Now that I've completed my use of the turret punch, I'm going to again use the alcohol and the wipe to wipe down and disinfect the equipment to make it safe for the next person to come and use it. Any of the areas that I've come into contact with, it's a good idea to wipe them down to be safe. Here we have punched out all of the holes in the bottom sheet. We're going to come over and use the pneumatic punch to notch out four positions, uh, two along either edge and this pneumatic punch when I place it in the location against the stops all the way to the left and all the way in, it'll be in position. And those two are going to um, make the notches. To activate the pneumatic punch, I'm going to use the two hand presses, hand buttons, and I'll do those simultaneously. And that will place two of the notches and then I'll rotate the sheet around 180 degrees. Again, against the stop to the left and back. And once again, activate the punch and that will complete the four notches we need. And when I'm finished with the pneumatic punch, I'll grab some paper towel with the IPA and once again wipe down the surfaces that I've come into contact with for safety, like that. So we're going to remove this strip of material from the top sheet because the top piece is a little bit more narrow uh, a sheet of aluminum uh, in order to make a good fit with the bottom piece. So to do that, we're going to use our, our power shear here. And what we'll do is we'll slide our sheet in and align the 
the scribed line with the edge of the table and I can sight through this opening right here to see exactly where I need to be. You'll have to find it yourself and then once you have you'll see that it's ready to go and aligned and I'll turn the power shear on. Underneath here is a foot switch which will activate the shear and then I'll put two hands careful where my fingers are to make sure they're out of the way completely and I'll hold it securely in that position and then depress the foot switch and make the shearing action and when I'm done turn it off. Now I'm going to wipe down the area on the shear that I've come into contact with with the alcohol and the wipe to disinfect for the next person. All right, when handling your sheet metal, either before or after you've made any modifications to it, remember that the edges can be very sharp. So we want to make sure that we have um, handled the edges very carefully, and then we're going to use a file to deburr those edges. And for the straight edges, we're going to do just a quick operation. A file has teeth that point in this direction in this case so you only push with a file like this so just just to take down each of the sharp edges as a result of the shearing action we're going to just take down any overly sharp edges on both sides and then after we've done the outer edges, there are other types of deburring tools we can use for the non-straight corners and edges. But the corners themselves are particularly sharp, so we definitely want to take down those so that we don't cut ourselves with those. Now inside holes after punching these can definitely leave a sharp burr so we're going to use a different tool for that. I'm going to find the deburring tools. There are two types of deburring tools that we can use. One is for um, any sort of odd inside corner or edge such as these and this deburring tool has a sharp edge there that can help take down any sharp edges on your sheet metal nicely. You can also take down the inside surfaces of interior holes and then you just notice that there's no real sharp burr there as a result of the punching action. And then finally for the smaller diameter holes we have this circular deburring tool which can be used to quickly deburr any of your inside holes. And you want to do both sides just to ensure that there are no burrs that can catch and cut you or someone else while you're constructing and installing the project. I'm completely deburdened. It's now safe to handle. So once we're finished deburring, all of our hand tools should be wiped down making them safe for the next person to use. Of course, we're using hand sanitizer and or washing our hands regularly throughout to ensure that everyone stays safe. And then I'll put these away with clean hands into the tool cabinet. I'm doing uh, some bending operations here. And according to the instructions, I need to go ahead and make the um, bends along the edges. These two edge bends here that will uh, allow us to form the walls of the bottom sheet. And we'll use this uh, press brake here to do that. When I get to the press brake, it may be in the off position. And if it is, I'm going to reach behind near the power plug and turn it on. And when it wakes up, it's reading all zeros. And the location of the stop that dictates the position of the bends is, uh, is in a random location. So I'm going to follow the instructions here to run the 
stop all the way forward. And then, because the numbers just indicate how far it's traveled, I'll need to set home and I'll hit zero. And now I'm at the half inch location. That's the distance between the stop and the middle of the bend that will be formed. And I could just double check that with the, with the measuring instrument and see that yes, it's right on a half of an inch. And now, I am ready to take and form two bends outward on outwardly on the bottom sheet. So I'm going to go and place the bottom sheet in this location and I'm going to bring the handle, that's this somewhat painted uh, larger diameter uh, tool handle here uh, to that location and I'm going to hold it in position as I move the handle down to ensure that the edge of the sheet metal stayed along the stop firmly so that I make this bend uh, one half inch all the way along. When I've seen that I've done that correctly, I can flip it around and do the other side. And that completes the two half inch bends. Okay, the next operation <clears throat> is on the same tool, which is actually a finger press brake. It has these fingers here that will allow us to make uh, bends uh, when we have a 90 degree bend already in the sheet metal, as you'll see in a moment. So the first thing we need to do is we need to adjust the distance between the stop and the bend point to four inches. So to do that, I'm going to run the instrument in the upward direction that says over here, according to this, to press the three button. So I'm gonna move it back until it is on four inches. And I'm at four. Now that I've verified it's four inches, I'm going to go ahead and align. I have to do two things, I have to push the sheet metal piece into the stop at four inches back and I also need to slowly and carefully bring down the handle to get a little bit closer and then I'm going to make sure that I align one of the spaces between the fingers on the brake tool uh, so that the side bends of the sheet metal go in between them. So if I don't I'm going to smash the sheet metal in ways that I don't intend to. So it's really you have to be particularly mindful here of doing the two things together, aligning the sheet metal vertical pieces along, uh, between the spaces between the fingers on the brake tool and also align the back end uh, flat and flush along the stop. So once I feel confident that I have that position held, I slowly, firmly bring the handle down to make a 90 degree bend right along that location. Now with the confidence of doing it the first time, I can set up to do the second time in the same way. And now I have my two 90 degree bends. And now I'm gonna just wipe down the machine. With the alcohol on the places that I've touched, the buttons on the machine if I touch them, on the uh, indicator, and of course the handle, and any other surfaces that I may have touched. And that's now safe for the next person to use. The last operation is on the top sheet, and we'll want to make uh, bends at two specific points and we'll use this instrument here, this brake, and I'm going to again turn the indicator on. It looks very close to just a hair under four. That kind of confirms that the electronics are working correctly and now I feel confident and committing to making the bend. I don't want to have to re-bend this if I do it wrong, so I try to take some care in ensuring that everything's correct and then I place the sheet metal in against the stop. Now again, I'm gonna do the operation with care and mindfulness for making sure that the sheet metal doesn't move out of position against the stop. So I'm gonna come very close and then recheck that measurement and that position and I see that I am firmly against the stop and straight and I even got a little bit of a click sound because it was right against it 
and that looks good. And now, the moment of truth, if everything worked out correctly, this piece of the top should fit nicely over the bottom piece and be fairly square and fairly well aligned and it looks like we have pretty good success on this one. Okay, now that I've finished all my operations and I wanna make sure that the equipment is safe for the next person to use, I'm gonna wipe down all of the surfaces that I have touched to make sure that it is safe for the next user. I'll just leave the instrument on for the next person and turn everything off at the end of the day. Now it's metal, so if you make a bend that is incorrect, we may have to go and rebend something. Being metal, it can be reflattened out and repositioned, and then you'll have some perhaps a little bit of additional fold marks and such to make it correct, because there are a lot of different operations that we had to get correct to make it work correctly. But if you do, any additional full fold lines will be your own sort of customization. And that's how we do our sheet metal bending for our prism chassis.